Hello, welcome to the channel. When I was first getting started into 3D printing, I had a million questions like, is this resin going to really smell that bad? Or how long will each print actually take? Or how do I even use these files? I've never heard of an STL. So in this video, I'm going to address some of the things that I think that you should know when you first start on your 3D printing journey. Now, when you're first starting something new, the best thing that I found to do instead of asking how to do it is to ask what I wish I knew when I started as that will normally give you more information than like a step by step guide. I'll leave the best one till last because, well, that just makes sense. So to start off, number one, learn to support models. This is a major one. So when you first begin, if you're like me, you just want to get some cool models printed ASAP so you can start building and adding to your armies. Now, saying this, you can get pre-supported files, especially on some of the bigger Patreons. And nine times out of the 10, these will be great. But if you're looking for something that is an exact clone of a model that is produced by a company who will 100% not tolerate anything that you're doing unless you're buying their models that only cost them a fraction to make and they can sell for a huge markup and even increase the prices every year. Sorry, I almost went into a rant. Like I was saying, if you're looking for the likes of a Space Marine, they would be hard to find pre-supported and especially for them to be like a one-to-one -one copy or very similar. Long story short, learning to do the supports yourself will save you in the long run. Once you've done it a few times and developed a workflow for it, it really isn't that bad. I can do a video on how I support my models and what my workflow is, which to be honest is quite fast, especially compared to what I seen whenever I first started. Let me know if that interests you in the comments below. Now, if you're still here, great. Thanks for sticking in there and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any videos when they are released. Shameless plug out of the way, moving on to number two. Now, number two is keep plenty of stock on hand. By this, I mean make sure you have plenty of gloves, isopropyl alcohol, kitchen roll or blue roll, and of course, resin. When I started, I bought one box of 100 gloves and thought, this is going to do me for ages. I don't need to worry about getting anything for a while. How wrong I was. When they say resin exposure is dangerous, believe it. You do not want to see pictures of people's hands when they have been exposed to resin. I have tried to reuse some gloves thinking, well, I didn't really touch any resin. I should be fine. No, don't do it. Ever. <laughs> Just buy two boxes of gloves and don't skimp on them when you're handling your printer or uncured resin models. Number three is to dial in your printer. Now, this is something that I am only going to start to do myself. There are a few exposure tests out there and it's really up to you which one you wanna use, but dialing in your printer to your resin will help make the details pop and in theory, reduce the likelihood of failures happening, which, by the way, will happen. I don't think there is a single person who can honestly say that they have printed for six months plus and haven't had a failure. It just happens. Even when you think that you have everything set up correct, even a small thing like the change in temperature could make a print fail. Number four. Now, this one really is personal to me. Have a plan set out. By that, I mean when you're about to start printing, know what your next five or 10 prints are going to be and stick to it. I have the mind like a magpie. When I see something shiny and new, I just, I just gotta have it. So don't be like me. If your army is going to be say Nurgle Demons, then print out the HQ choices, then the troops. So at least you have an army that you can play with straight away and then think, well, maybe I'll need some elite choices or fast attack and then print them out. So ideally, if I could start over again, I would focus on one army, do all of the things that I want and need, and then after I've printed maybe 2,000 or 3,000 points worth, then move on. Right now, as we speak, 
I've printed proxies for Slanesh daemons. Now, I've been wanting to print these for well over a month. So last night I thought I should print a rhino. I, I, I don't even have any firstborn marines to use it with. Why? Now, the grand finale. The moment you have all waited for. Number five. Save everything. I mean it. If you find a file on cults or a Patreon that you're sub to and you like it, save it, back it up, and then back it up again. So when I started 3D printing, I had found by chance a subreddit called Printed Warhammer. Now, this was like the utopia of STL files for Warhammer 40,000. There used to be a Discord with its own mega file full of all of the STL files for Warhammer 40,000. Now, every time someone asked, how can I download the entire mega? Countless people would laugh and choke about new people and say, <coughs> You don't need to download it. There are backups and contingencies in place. It will never go down. It will always be here. It's gone. Disappeared. Nada. If you lurk hard enough, you might find someone posting a copy that they've downloaded. But that always gets taken down as fast as it goes up. Trust me. Download and save any STL file that you think you might want to print. If you made it to the end, leave a comment and let me know which one you agree with the most. Or if you have some tips that you think are more important. I would love to hear it and I'm sure new people clicking on this video would love to hear it as well. Thanks for watching.